look, all I'm just saying is I'm coming into this episode with certain expectations. Not that I'm going to be disappointed if they are disproven, if my theory about what this episode could entail is disproven, but I am not ready, okay? I am... My heart is ready to bleed again. That's all I'm going to say. Hello, everyone. Liam Caddison here as we react to Angel. This is episode number eight of season one. I will remember you. So, like I said, I'm coming into this episode with certain expectations uh, following the ending of the latest Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode titled Pangs. Um... But who knows? Uh, this could go into a completely unpredictable uh, direction. So we'll just have to wait and see. But last episode uh, of Angel was pretty, pretty, um, was pretty, pretty good stuff. It was great to focus a bit on Doyle's past as well as um, the fact that it had so much, uh, so much deepness to it with, with um, Doyle coming to accept that he was to blame with his marriage falling apart because he he just relied on assumption that uh, Harry was sugarcoating the fact that she could accept that he was part demon when in actuality she she could accept the fact that um, he was part demon and it very it very much intrigued her so yeah it was it was a it was a powerful episode but um, I'm really excited with this one so. Let's get it. I'm going to be completely wrong about what my expectations are coming into this episode. But either way, it's Angel. And so far, it's been an absolute ride. So with that said, let's get into episode number eight of season one for Angel. I will remember you. Let's go. It was all stalking me in the shadows and then left. And then he didn't even say hello. I'd be a little upset. Wouldn't you? Okay, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Uh-huh. Well, this is Doyle, and he gets visions of people in trouble. Nice to make your... And this is us leaving you two alone. Oh, shh. <laughs> this is so eerie, but huh. I love it. Whether I see you or not, I feel you. Inside. It throws me. It throws me too. So let's just stick to the plan. Oh. We'll keep our distance until a lot of time has passed. Given enough time, we should be able to forget. No, I'm kidding. Show though. In here. We'd want more. It's so tempting, isn't it? But ah. nothing's changed. We'd only end up having to leave each other again. And it would hurt. And that's again. the best case scenario. <laughs> Ray knows I can't follow. But I can. Maybe he got a son of you too. I, I don't want you going after him alone. Look, it's best. To what are you gonna do? Stick Cody with her? Damn, this guy! I'd hate to imagine an army of him. Oh no! On oh, his cut arm as well. Oh no! Wait, wait. Was this hopping? Wait. Oh, no, no, no. Don't do this to me. He can actually well, have the fight. life he wants. Oh, my God. What? She killed him. <laughs> my. Chocolate. Oh. Chocolate? All right, all right. We need to focus here. Try and figure it out. Oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for yeah, for I happy angel. Yogurt. Ugh. Orson, we're in a situation here. All right. You have to approach them through channels, dangerous channels. Yeah, you know what? Start approaching. All right, all right. 
This is some really, yeah, really... Maybe we could try the oracles. But hey, if they turn you into a toad, don't say I didn't warn you. I mean, this is some really, really big information that you kept discreet, Doyle. <laughs> I like time. It's not a Rolex. It's so little and so much of it. Well, what's happened to me? The auguries say no. But it's happened, it was meant to be. From this day, you will live. In a sense, die I'm kind of worried, but Privy excited as well. Pains and pleasures. That which we serve is no longer that which you serve. as usual they get groiny with one another the world as we know it falls apart but not anymore well, cursed anymore so anyway, they can you can't be sure that they're... oh please they've got the forbidden love of all time they've been apart for months now he's suddenly human i'm sure they're down there just having tea and crackers <laughs> i'm just saying it's worth the wait to know that it's right i need to be sure you won't get hurt again that there's you know, no, it's a good no thing I didn't fantasize about you turning human only about ten zillion times. Because today would have been a real letdown. <laughs> now, why couldn't have this happened earlier? Why couldn't that demon show up in season three? So how did... Irresistible. Oh god, okay, okay, you've just been human for a day. Let's not get crazy. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> oh uh, my god, I'm Mortal coordination being <laughs> something to be desired? Wrong. It's just right. <laughs> <laughs> well, this oh is all working god. out nicely. <laughs> Just like I've always wanted to. <laughs> like a normal girl. Falling asleep in the arms of a normal boyfriend. The guy she yearns for as well. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm so done. Don't you want to wake the girl? Not for the world. <laughs> easy. It's the blood. It's never an easy sight. It's part of being human. Now. <laughs> when the kill yeah, me. these new experiences. It's gonna be pretty overwhelming. Just remember that it's brutal, deadly, and here. And above you. Like a Hydra, five times. Come on, Buffy, kick its ass. A great darkness is coming. You got that right. We're powerful alone, you are dead. What do you think of the great warrior now? Little bland. Oh, go on, Angel. Eat salt. <laughs> Bullseye. Maybe that'll, that'll teach you not to be salty. Uh, Poppy, are you? Shh, shh. You're all right. It's all that matters. <laughs> For her life. It is not our place to grant life and death. And ask you to take mine back. so she could live. Look, I can't protect her or anyone this way, not as a man. You're asking to be what you were. A demon with a soul. There we go. 
There we go. Because of the sleigh. Took a whole 24 hours to weigh the ups and downs of being a regular Joe and decided it was more fun being a superhero? You know, that's not it. How can we be together if the cost is your life? Or the lives of others? Oh, Angel. It's done. How am I supposed to go on with my life? Knowing oh what we had, what we could have had. You won't. No one will know but me. Everything we did. It never, it never happened. happened for it anyone did. but him. It did. I know it did. Let's just stick to the plan. Keep our distance. I had a lot of time to catch up on my reading. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I guess we've covered it, right? Guess we did. And that's all there really is to say. Oh, oh. Yeah. Angel. Oh boy. <sighs> you know, I thought it would be bad, like, the blood would give him some side effects. And he'd have to choose to be a non living demon again, but. This is the thing. You, you can expect something to be bad. You can expect something to have some consequences, but it's never... It, it, it always... Uh, it, it's always worse than what you can imagine. Because that stings so fucking much. The fact that he's only uh, able to, rem to remember... God damn. God damn. This was on par with becoming part two in terms of <laughs> the emotions. God damn it. God damn it. Why? Why why torture my soul like that? I mean, I I had it coming with me being so happy with Bangel. Cause of course they weren't going to go full beans on it but it was it, this is the thing it was so beautiful to see angel as a human like as a as a living mortal being who who could feel pain who could who could i mean it, it sounds bad when you say that but this was the life that buffy always wanted but of course as we explored in this episode, there weren't. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows, was it? Like not just for for Angel and the the fact that he couldn't really um, defeat the Mora demon, but also Cordy as well and Doyle. They were out of a job because who's going to be the tank in battle? Not Cordy. Not I mean, Cordy's killed a vampire, but that doesn't make her like the next Slayer. Um. So in some cases, maybe him being more all non vampire was for the best. See, that's the thing. You're at this conundrum. Like, what, 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 like, what would make you happier? Angel um, solving, like, as a viewer. Especially if you ship Angel. If you don't, then this was an easy choice, but... Um, th this is the conundrum we face, like, we either, 
we either have Bajor and have Buffy have the perfect life, but Angel Angel becomes a bit more of a liability and, and, and if he wants to fight, he could end up dead and that could put Buffy off her game and that could make her dead as well. <sighs> yeah. It's either we have to accept human Angel or Angel as he was before, so... But I'm glad, because, like, with, with this episode, it was reminiscent to, um... It, it was reminiscent to In the Dark, where you had that the Ring of Gamora, and, um... You had you, you dealt with, okay, the pros to this and the cons to that, so... So, yeah, there was that dilemma. And the difference to to that episode and this episode is Angel didn't really have a choice when he became mortal uh, because the blood infused with the cut on his hand whereas the the ring um, the ring was a choice you could just zip it on and boom I'm 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 gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. I just want to say, Liam Duke, you're mean. You're a meanie. You're a meanie beanie. Because I put on Twitter how reminiscent this episode was to becoming part two, which I'll explain in a minute because I've got some comparisons to to that joyful episode um listed, and um he puts, "Will you never forget it?" Subscribe to his channel, though. He's an awesome dude. But, um, yeah, this episode, I f honestly, I feel like this was, like, the best episode of Angel thus far. Um, which is funny because Buffy did appear in it. And, uh, yeah, um, I feel like the focus on, not just, not just the focus on, on Bangel was great, but I think it was probably one of the best representations as well. Um, so, yeah, and, and, and it delves into, it, it delves into some really, really nice concepts, not just for, for Bangel, I guess, but also for the adversary as well. Like, the Mora Demon was pretty, pretty intense before the weakness was exploited with the, with the gem on, on the head. Um, because I was thinking before you could destroy the, um, the, the, the gem, uh, it, it would make a very like if an army did did show up, it would make a very very um, it would make a very very uh, p uh powerful army because humanity would be done and dusted. But um, with the gem, yeah. Um, uh, but I really really loved how this episode flowed. Like I said, I think it was the best episode so far. Um, and I just, I gotta say. This episode did remind me of Becoming Part 2 in terms of the emotions from my perspective. Um, but also, like, I felt like the camera work um, with the angles were similar to Becoming Part 2, especially with the close-ups of, of Buffy on that side and Angel on that side. And not just that, though, but Angel having to sacrifice um, something. Like, he had to be... Like, he had to uh, be sacrificed at the end of becoming part even though he went from Angelus to angel he had to he had to still go to hell uh, at the end of season two uh, and of course the angel thing played as well so uh, I I think that was all deliberate if not then I hate the show but I wouldn't be surprised if the becoming part two parallels um played up in in that final scene before uh time was rewound so yeah um but yeah this was this was great i like i said i think it was one of my favorite focuses on bajel it gives buffy what she's always wanted but there were ramifications like i said i i assumed there were going to be ramifications this was not all going to be all happy and yeah 
but I didn't expect them to be as bad as what they uh, what they appeared to be with Angel being the only one to remember what happened in in the in the time that never was in the day that never was should I say so yeah that was painful and what was worse is when you think back about the episode there was some heavy foreshadowing as well like um the first scene as well with how symbolic it was with with Angel fixing up the clock um the watches as well to the oracles who were very very interesting um i even think that angel said um like with enough time we should be able to and buffy said forget so yeah there was some really really um there, there was some uh punches being prepared for me and uh when 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 the punches um uh, landed in me it hurt. It did hurt. So, yeah. But um, I also love how there were also parallels, like I said, to the Ring of Gamora as well, with um, the ability to give Angel this life um, that um, he's always wanted. Of course, it's a bit different in this case, because, like I said, there's a matter of choice and um, how this was an accident. In this case, the blood thing was the blood fusion was an accident. But um, also the fact I think the ring was, was still allowed you to be a vampire, but you could um, you could basically cross off any of the disadvantages a vampire would suffer, like being staked, like uh, you could still vamp it up, but you could um, you could eliminate all of the disadvantages a vampire would have. In this case, he was completely human. So I liked how. Whilst there were similar ideas going on with the ring and, and the blood fusion, they did play around with differences, but um, it still it still came to Angel having to sacrifice something so perfect, um, something he needs to work towards. Um, though that wasn't much of a focus, um, probably because Angel knows that this wasn't his choice at the end of the day. Um well, it was his choice sacrificing his human side, but him becoming human, yeah. Um, so, yeah, like I said, um, whilst that wasn't focused on, I think Angel knew that this was something that was uh, basically forced upon him, I guess. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I loved Buffy coming into this very early on, um, because I think a lot of us would have had the feeling what this episode would entail if you watched it in order. But I was also very, very interested with uh, how she would react to Cordy and Doyle, especially because um, Doyle's um, like the new addition in terms of the main cast um, in, I guess, the uh, not the Angel verse, the Buffy verse. Um, but yeah, point still stands. Um, and with Cordy, it was as awkward as you would expect. But um, yeah, like they didn't have much screen time, both. Um, Cordy and Doyle, but I feel like it was still great to focus on them too and how um, the ramifications of Angel being human um, again affected them because they were out of a job because this is one of the things you've got to think about because uh, like again with the Ring of Gamora it doesn't give you a straight okay well this is all sunshine and rainbows it gives it it allows the and and i certainly felt this as well it allows the viewer to think okay well on one side it's all great we got buffy having the life that she the the romantic life that she yearns for um and it's so great to see it's so great to see angel like raid the fridge and uh, that was a very very comical um scene but uh it, it it gives him the chance to raid the fridge it gives him the chance to be happy with with buffy so yeah but on the other side especially with the um the mora demon as well uh, and how in the second fight and how angel was an absolute like absolutely got hammered there you just got to think that him being a vampire again might benefit him in the long run, especially with this great darkness that is coming, um, which is possibly foreshadowing, like, well, of course, guessing foreshadowing for uh, what is going to happen in, like, the latter stages of um, of um, season one. But um, this is the thing, like, 
if Angel is killed and Buffy's the only one who's strong enough, I guess, to, to fight the supernatural, she might be distracted because because Buffy can be easily distracted if something bad happens to the people that she, uh, she loves or if, if something damaging happens in her life, like we've seen it before. Um, so, yeah. Um, but who's who's going to protect LA as well at the at the end of the day? Uh, Cor- like in Cordia Doyle out of a job because who's going to be the tank? That's that's the whole point at the end of the day. So, um, I'm glad that they discovered that that they that they didn't point this as like a heavenly um gift, something that is so perfect with no ramifications because there were. Um, so yeah, um, but I think that was the point of this episode as well like with 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 him become with him given uh, this gift that buffy could um could cherish the life that she wants there has to be some ramifications and like fitzsimmons theme with a whedon show um they're cursed at the end of the day like even with the perfect um scenario there has to be ramifications with the life they lead because buffy will always be the slayer and um even though angel like could be cured like there's there's like it's not like buffy um needs to be cured of being the slayer unless all demons take a retirement plan but um this is the thing like angel uses his abilities to his advantage and we saw him as a human he tried to fight but to no avail um so yeah, there's this there's this idea that like um they're cursed at the end of the day, even though we had some really, really um nice moments in this episode with like especially with, with um um them having like snacks on the bed and, and being cute and they were uh it, it, it seems like they, they did do the do um, because they could finally have that. There was no angels going to turn to Angelus uh, scenario because uh, he's human. So, yeah, uh, there were there were some really really cute moments in this episode with Angel. But all the more reason to reflect on this episode and just feel your heart shatter with that final scene, which I thought was absolutely well performed, w- well written. And it was very, very heartbreaking. Like I said, the parallels as well to, to becoming part two, the the Bangel theme. It was it was really good. And like I said, David and Sarah did a fantastic job in portraying that heartbreak. So, um, yeah, that was uh really, really. Um, just thought I left OBS on pause still. Um, so that would have been great. But um, I was also going to say as well, before I distracted myself, that um, there was an idea as well with... with um, th- there's a part of me that was thinking, I'm wondering if some people would think that... Um, like, uh, like what people would think regarding the timing of bringing Buffy onto Angel... Uh, for this one episode because whereas we're, we've seen Oz appear on Angel before this is like um, the Green Arrow showing up on the Flash isn't it um, uh, and vice versa so um, but I think the timing um, is pretty pretty appropriate like especially with the scenarios that was going around um, I, I don't know I just feel like some people might be thinking that Buffy it, with the fact that I feel like this episode is my favorite so far, people might like have this nitpicking feeling that ain't uh, that the spotlight is being taken from Angel to Buffy, especially with how Buffy was able to deal with the Mora demon in the second fight. Uh, with well, with ease compared to Angel, who was getting beaten up left, right, and center. But I think that was the point to exploit the weaknesses of Angel being a human. So, uh, and and both characters are struggling to move on they they are i feel like this episode will be symbolic in in terms of um characters being able to finally move on without that shadow creeping over them of of their past so um uh, that's what i feel like this episode is going to highlight so um yeah but um yeah it was brilliant i loved the oracles they were 
pretty pretty interesting and um um eccentric characters i feel the mora demon like i said was a very very interesting concept especially with the regenerative blood um and how they are creatures of immortality unless you go for the pretty much exploited area like um uh, yeah, it, it's pretty much exploited. It, and, and not just that, though, but it's massive. It's not like a small gem, is it? So, yeah, but um, no, uh, the Mora Demon was a pretty, pretty great concept, especially with how it was setting things up for, for Bajol. And um, yeah, when when the blood infused with the cut, I thought he would partly become Mora uh, and it would infect him, which is kind of true. Like he gained the be uh, the benefits of what the Mora demon had with the regenerative energy and it made him alive again. So, uh, but I thought it was more physical. Um, so yeah, I thought the, um, the, the fusion would have resulted in a more physical manifestation. So yeah, but um, I loved this episode. It, repaired and fractured the relationship so much um it, see this is the thing we did give us and it giveth and we didn't take it that's that's the thing that was that's the thing with this episode we we got what we wanted but we were also stabbed in the gut so um yeah but like i said sarah and david did a fantastic job with with uh, the the performances in this episode so yeah um yeah that was angel episode eight of season one just just hurt me just hurt me so yeah i will see you guys next time i hope you guys enjoyed this reaction uh you can check my videos on the right if you want to check out more of my content you could also subscribe to my media feeds and channel if you want to hope you guys enjoyed this reaction hope you guys take care and i will see you guys next time toodles